Master David. You could tell it was me. Your footsteps. I ken the walk of everyone here. Well, that's, that's rather incredible. Aye, that it is, laddie. That it is. I hear better than most. See more than most and all. Father had a similar toolbox. Back when he still fixed things around the house. When you talked about what they did to my father, what did you mean? You shouldn't have come back. You cannot go through what he did as a bairn and no be sick. So his hospitalization was justified then? Not for me to say. Before you think of putting down roots here, you should think on what the poison groom here did to your father. You can? No, not really. If you don't mind, this door will no mend itself. I'll leave you to it then. Father had a similar toolbox. Back when he still fixed things around the house. But I'm not keen on waiting for his return. Nobody left to mourn the dead or care for their graves, it seems. before in the painting this is the grave I, I saw in that waking dream or whatever it was the grave my father buried something in as a boy who's buried here if I could just ah these vines are too thick When you talked about what they did to my father, what did you mean? You shouldn't have come back. You cannot go through what he did as a bairn and no be sick. So his hospitalization was justified then? Not for me to say. Before you think of putting down roots here, you should think on what the poison groom here did to your father. You can? No, not really. 
you wouldn't have to have a chapel key, would you? Ain't set a foot in there for years, and I don't intend to either. That'll be a no, then. Uh, the graveyard. Is it a family plot? Aye. No matter how high and mighty, all the Gordons end up there. <sighs> a cheery thought. It's a shame we don't have the means to properly care for the graves. Why bother? It is bones and food for worms. Um, may I borrow your bolt cutter? Maybe. If I can what you need it for. The graves. I would like to tidy them up. That way I can pay my respects properly. Is that a fact? Why is that then? They are my family. They deserve to be remembered. Ah, fair enough, laddie. Just grab it yourself, will ye? You? Cecilia Shaw Nee Gordon. Aunt Cecilia. Now, let's see if there's something really buried in here. Another piece of the castle model. Another part of the model and it's stained with what seems to be old blood. Why did Father bury this when he was a child? say you were, or the victim of this, this curse, this curse of the Gordons, <sighs> whatever it is, I think you may have passed it on to me. Being the chronicle of the family Gordon, as laid down by Sir Drummond Gordon, the year of our Lord, 1413. Local legend speaks of this particular glen as being inhabited from time immemorial. Enigmatic, elaborately carved Pictish stones stand as timeless evidence of this. As for the locals, they appear prideful of the counsel they delight in giving to visitors. Traveler, beware. The Celtic peoples arrived in this place like a great beast bringing with them the bloodlines that would eventually spawn the Gordon clan. Using their superior numbers, knowledge, and machines of war, they swiftly conquered the primeval Picts. With them, they brought to their religion and druid clerics. The magics these wise men used did shape forever the lands, even until this present day. It is said that the sempiternal burden our family carries rose at that time. Tis well recorded how the Empire of Rome did fail to tame the wayward Scots, that they did even raise a barrier to protect their mighty empire, 
What is seldom told is the truth behind their defeat. Our ancestors drew upon ancient powers to aid their victory. Powers not easily fathomed by the fragile human mind. This aid did come at the greatest of costs. A debt as yet unsettled. A price we will continue to pay until the last Gordon passes to dust. For the centuries, we Gordons made the land our own. Others did bow to us as we kept the secrets of Skahandu, the secrets of the Black Mirror. Even as tragedy and madness did fester in our foundations, we held fast and steered the land through vile English attack and worse. In time, the Gordons and the land became one. Some pages have been ripped out. The only thing left seems to be some kind of family oath. In blood we are bound to the land we protect. To the truths we alone may conceal. I shall forfeit my life. Lest my clan should suffer, I shall forfeit my spirit to hold the darkness at bay. In blood we are bound Till the day of the reckoning. What do you Is this what madness feels like? It can't be real. This looks like the bottom of a lake. What are you trying to show me? a fresh wound across her stomach. The figure up there must be... Edward.
Uh, did you... did you see her? She... Uh, drowned. Calm down, you're in shock. What were you doing clamoring about in here? <sighs> oh, if I told you, 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 you'd think me mad. Odd. That is just what your father said to me. What? Who are you? My name is Dr. Leah Farber. I treated your father at the asylum. The asylum? Let's get you back to the castle and make sure you are all right. What did you come here for? I'm not sure your father's story is finished yet, and there are some things I still need to make my peace with. What's this about an asylum? As I said, your father was admitted. Why? Who did that to him? I did. But, unfortunately, he managed to escape. What? Hold on a minute. How dare you come in here and... Told you? Your father was a madman. A complete and utter madman. Don't mind me. Please continue. Well, what right did you have to lock my father up in a, in a madhouse? I was his doctor. I understand you are in shock, but you have no right to speak to me in such a way. I was trying to help him. He's dead. Capital job. Now, hold on just a minute. Jesus! Oh, no! No! Oh. Eddie, it'll be all right. Pull yourself together. I suggest nobody else goes down there. We should keep the room intact until the police can get here. I shall alert them first thing in the morning. What an unfortunate accident. An accident? You think so? Just after the madman's son turned up at our door? And yet you were the one standing over her body with blood on your hands. How dare you! I was too late! I was trying to help her! She... She... <laughs> there, there, my sweet boy. Let's get you to bed. Angus, would you? Of course, ma'am. I think we will all benefit from a good night's sleep. I know you may have no reason to, but I need you to trust me. I'm the only one on your side when it comes to your father's death. Lady Margaret certainly isn't. But if I told you what I saw in the chapel, you'd have me in a padded cell, just like my father. Why did you come here? To make sure my father was successfully in the ground? With all due respect, Mr. Gordon, I will not allow you to speak to me or about my work in such a tone. I tried everything I could to aid your father. Your father was heavily drugged when he was brought to me. To prevent any further violent outburst, or so Lady Margaret had said. But something felt wrong, even then. So, what was my father like when you locked him up? I didn't just lock him up. I tried to help him. He was convinced he was carrying some ancient curse that he was being haunted by evil. I wish I had reached him, had been able to reach him. Maybe if I threw you a bone, you'd get off my back. 
father was obsessed with the history of the family for as long as I can remember. Did your father actually believe his family was out to get him? Who knows? I think what scared him was beyond the physical. He used to babble about a dark force threatening him and our family. Was that why he moved you to India? To get as far away as possible? I believe so. And yet, here you are, in the very place he sought to protect you from. Who knows? Maybe there is an ancient evil in this place. An evil that drags us back no matter how far away we get. Even from the other side of the world. And what do you think? Was your father right? Are there things beyond the physical? I have other things to worry about right now. Things like a drowning woman floating in thin air. If you really want to help me, I need to find out what the maid knew. What Lady Margaret and Angus didn't want her to tell me. You believe it got her killed? Maybe. What I saw in the chapel, it has to be real. She must have drowned herself down at the loch. Because if it's all in my mind, like father, like son... We need to examine the maid's body in the cellar. To find out who killed her? To be sure she was murdered before we start pointing fingers. Angus will have the key. Unless we can find another way in. Rory's not one for cleaning up after himself. I think I might have an idea how to get into the cellar, but I'm not sure you'll like it. If it involves this filthy dumbwaiter, don't even think about it. True, that wouldn't be very ladylike. You might want to consider what I do for a living before trying to taunt me this cheaply. You said you'd help me, so help me. On my terms. I can't fit in there and I see no other way into the cellar. Hmm. You're asking me to put a lot of trust in you, given the circumstances. You can trust me. And I will do my very best to learn to trust you. Hmm. All right, then. Clothes can be washed. Lovely. I need something to open the doors from the inside once I'm down there. This should do it. We need to examine the maid's body in the cellar. To find out who killed her? To be sure she, she was murdered. But Going down. Good luck. See you in a minute. Dr. Farber. Is everything all right? Leah! Oh, if anything's happened to her. You need 
needn't worry about me. I've been to stranger places than this castle. Follow me. Her neck's been broken, and with some considerable force, it seems. Her necklace looks like gold, albeit a plain design. And it's missing any form of pendant. Still, well beyond a maid's salary. It... Oh, where's that sudden draft coming from? Mr. Gordon? Speak to me, please. David, can you hear me? Mr. Gordon, are you with me? Exactly the usual way to address the staff. We're all here, sir. All down in the dark. We're... Something's coming. The attic, sir. She's in the attic! What just happened? You look like you were in some kind of trance. Perhaps the lack of sleep is affecting me. The visions that you'd think me insane if I described them to you. You need to learn to trust me. I am on your side, remember? So you say. But I remember you locked my father up too. A tiger can't change its stripes. Ugh, that's horrible. You're not the one with your hand in it. French. I don't speak French. I do. It says for Clara, forever yours. Who's Clara? <laughs> I don't know. Yet another relative, perhaps? We should ask someone who's been around here for longer. How did you know it was there? The pendant, I mean. If I told you, you wouldn't believe me. A hunch. Eddie gave this to her. We should ask him to his face just what his relationship was with her. This isn't another ghost story, is it? Look, you wouldn't understand. I can't... What I do understand is that we cannot accuse a man of murder without proof. The scene where Eddie did rip when she tried to get away from him. They seem to be a house full of carnivores.
If you'd just like to wait out here, sir. I need to speak with Eddie. The young master and her ladyship are otherwise detained. May I remind you, this is my house? May I remind you that it is not yours yet. Fair enough. There's no doubt about his loyalty, nor with whom it lies. Uh, Mr. McKinnon, who is Clara? The Lady Clara, young Eddie's late mother. A box with some of her belongings are kept in the library, as Master Eddie feels himself more a Gordon than a Mallory. belongings of Eddie's mother. Recognize that? The necklace. Is that? A young Eddie and his mother Clara. I regret to inform you that your husband, Corporal Victor Mallory, number 874511, was killed in action with the enemy on the day of the 14th of September in Ypres. Your husband was involved in an advance against enemy lines. While he and his fellow soldiers fell, the action was successful, and you can take comfort in knowing his sacrifice saved many lives. It was not possible to get his remains away, and he was buried in a soldier's grave. Please accept the condolences of all the company. Yours, Captain Arthur Jones, 4th Army. Thank you for your last letter. My heart soars with every word of yours I read. I touch the ink and imagine your fingers are just inches from mine. That we can almost touch. That I can almost feel the warmth of your skin once more. Young Edward grows more like his father each day. You'd be amazed how he shares your looks. I long for the day that this terrible war is ended and you return home to us so we can be a family once more. I shall write to you again soon. Know that, until then, you are always in our hearts. Your loving wife, Clara. The date. She was writing this when the death notice arrived. Oh, the poor woman. Eddie, I need to ask you about the maid. About Elsa. You didn't know her! I know that you and her were... That is to say, I know you had feelings for her. What? That's poppycock! You're as deranged as your father was! 
David, really? You go too far with this behaviour. The police will be here soon. Would you not prefer to clear this up before they get here in case they link Eddie with the crime? Now look here, young lady. How dare you speak? That's enough. Eddie. My little doe. Strange thing to call the help. How? It was just... Just harmless fun, that's all. You gave her this. It was your mother's. Uh, I did. It was. Eddie! I was just trying to cheer her up. She has nothing, and I had no need of it. You know she sends... <sighs> you know she sent most of her money home to her grandmother. Her clothing was ripped, as if someone was trying to force themselves upon her. I would never have hurt her. You're a worthless liar. You think she thought being pressed against a dead animal was harmless fun? How do you know? It's true. Elsa and I... I would never have laid a finger on her. We were in love. I helped her with everything. Even with her chores. Uh, uh, Rose and... That's quite enough. Eddie, you are obviously upset. And you are not helping, David. Angus, will you please take the young master upstairs? As you say, ma'am. I think you have caused quite enough disruption here. We shall settle this heritage dilemma first thing tomorrow. I don't think so. I have more questions now than ever about my father, the maid, this whole damn house. Have a care, David. Need I remind you of your father's temper? I would never. Given the current mental state of Master Eddie, who should be a part of the heritage considerations, any discussion on the topic would be futile at this point. Would you not agree? <sighs> Thank you, Leah. Maybe it's a good thing you're here after all. Impudent brats! What's going on? Did you notice when Margaret got angry? When Eddie mentioned... What was it? Chores involving a rose. What, what does that mean? Something about the garden, perhaps? We could ask Rory. Or is it about the attic? Oh, I wonder. Whatever it is, it's something she doesn't want us to know. The attic? I saw the maid coming down the stairs with a tray. But there's nothing up there but an empty room. Interesting. What is it? God! <laughs> I'll get you back. <laughs> Stop monkeying around. Come with me. I'll come inside in a bit. Don't go. Can I just have a few It's not a request. 
Carol. Don't worry. I'll be fine. What's happening to me? David? Is everything all right? We should make haste. Stunning. How curious! Come and look at this. Look, they form a clear circle. This can't be a fluke. Well, it looks like one of the stones is missing. Well, have you enough stone to weigh yourself down with? Something's carved into each one. I've never seen a rose like this before. I have. The gardener, Rory. He brought some down from the glass house. You see? The necklace was his mother's. He gave it to the maid. The maid! You're right. We need to speak to him about this. But how could you know this? I can't help you if you don't tell me. Cousin Eddie might be a murderer. How I draw my conclusions can wait for now. That's an unusual looking rose. I noticed one lying by the side of the loch. Aye, that's a been me. A flower for the flower of Skahandu, Cecilia. My aunt? They're for her? I grew them for her. She loved the roses, did Cecilia. No, the red ones, though. Made her think of blood, ye ken? Forgive me, but wouldn't it be more fitting to place them on her grave? Why, she's no there, is she, laddie? That's not where she rests. And I don't much stand by your modern god. Rory, what happened to her? What happened to Cecilia? I'm not in the mood to open old wounds, laddie. There are some strange markings carved into the stones on the shore. Runes, aye. I'm old-fashioned, I suppose. Still hold to the old ways. Superstitions don't gain validity just by being believed in for a long time. I'd watch that. Your precious science doesn't have all the answers, lassie. May I have some of the roses, Rory? I'd like to place them on Cecilia's grave. What she to you? You didn't ken her? No, I didn't. But she's family. And besides, Father always spoke fondly of her. He would even smile as he talked about playing in the gardens with her as a child. He did, did he? Aye, well, that's good to kin. 
I should have some left in the glass house. I'll speak to you later, Rory. Aye, I'm sure you will, laddie. Mm. So, Just hold on a moment. No, it's okay. I quite understand. You go ahead, and I'll wait here for you. If I must. Aye, you must. I know, it doesn't look like I have green fingers. Are these... I Cecilia's roses. They're beautiful. I like to think so. But they seem to be the only thing that grows here. These are dead as dodos. Hard to raise anything beautiful here ever since Cecilia's gone. Can you tell me about Cecilia? What was she like? She was a lovely lassie, but uh, she had more than her share of troubles. Grandfather Edward. You can well enough, son. You said she wasn't in her grave. Aye, that I did, that I did. Did she drown? She did. Killed herself. Her body was never found. Now all I have of her is my memories. And they are not what they were. And this. That is exquisite. Cecilia made this. She made it, I, for me. Girl must have cut her fingers a hundred times doing it. On the thorns, you can. You are unworthy of the name, Gordon. Get away from her, you coward! What just happened? I could ask you the same thing. You started to talk to yourself. 
And then you were throwing your arms about like you were fighting something. I couldn't see what. You started bawling and the lassie came in to see what was going on. She tried to settle you, but you just went for her. I saw an old lady. She wore a long, flowing dress. Her, her voice was strong, determined. Sounds like Rosemary. She was Lady Margaret's mother. Was Cecilia not able to have children? Did that anger Grandfather Edward? Maybe you can see well enough too, son. Maybe you can. It wasn't her. It was her husband. He was the bother. Uh, couldn't... Uh, <clears throat> you can? Hmm? I think so, yes. I well, uh, Edward blamed Cecilia for it. For picking the wrong man for her meat. You'll be fine, laddie. You just need some fresh air. This place can get to you.